say something. It's like a podcast, but it's a vodcast, so you can listen and watch. It's like news talk or sports talk, but it's life talk, so we can walk the road together. On today's episode, Stephen Curtis Chapman joins us to chat about his new book, Between Heaven and the Real World, his story of hope and trusting God to one day fix what is unfixable in the space between heaven and here. My story isn't any more important than anyone else's just because I've had my face on the cover of an album or won some awards, but I do feel like if I could share it in a way that others would feel a lot less alone. Yeah. And Thanks for joining the conversation. Yeah. Here we go. You are such a brave soul. <laughs> Why is that? Well, to join us. I don't know if they told you, but you're joining us on our carpool. So you're doing your road tour. We're doing the carpool. I think that your uh, road tour is a little more exciting than the carpool, although we love it. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds pretty fun. It is pretty fun. Okay, so I'm Kay Wyma, and this is Brenda Teal, and we're in Dallas, and we know you're in Texas right now, aren't you? Are you? I am. I'm in Lubbock, Texas. Yes, I'm in Dallas. I'll be there in a couple of days. Get well, your guns up over there with Texas Tech. Are you a Texas Tech? Yes. I know. <laughs> Remember, Ray is. <laughs> All right. So, what is what do you do in advance of a show? How do you get ready for it? Well, you know, it's a very highly secretive <laughs> thing. I can't really tell. I mean, can't give away all the secrets, but it's it's. So, if you if you told us, very, you'd have to kill us. Well, sorta. I mean, I didn't want to say that, but yeah, it's, it's basically comes down to that. You know, this uh, this tour, everyone is a little bit different. I, uh, you know, I iron. I like to iron. That's you one like of my pre-concert iron? rituals. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I know. Isn't that, isn't that hilarious? I actually, I don't do that uh, as often now, but I have an ironing board in my little road case. Oh, and, my gosh. And, uh, but, but I'm currently not wearing a garment that requires ironing, so that, that works actually okay. It works out better, but, um, <laughs> but I... Uh, we, you know, we, we this this tour is interesting because I'm I'm out with like six other artists, yeah. and I don't actually go on stage till pretty late. It, it's close to ten o'clock before I'm on stage for my set. So, um, you know, we'll listen to the other bands some. Um, we'll I may exercise some. Uh, we'll of course have dinner, and we'll have a little gathering of a time of prayer and read some scripture together, and um, you know just pray about whatever's going on and so it kind of depends there's it's a little bit different but um but always good yeah. well all good, all good things lots of people in dallas are excited about you being here you have tons of fans here and we know you're going to be at the american Airlines center on sunday. on sunday night and we know you remember the fun venues like reunion and uh yes i do and oh, yeah. six flags well. i have to tell you i saw you at six flags years ago which um which yeah. brings me to your book, which we're very, very excited about, which thank you for joining us on Say Something because that's when I saw that you had written it, I was just so thrilled on so many levels because I knew you would go you, that you would just be authentic and real and just address issues head on and hopes and dreams and even the beauty of the amusement park and the role it has played in your life <laughs> because I can't yeah. believe. Tell us about the amusement park. Well, first of all, I can't believe you had a fun land where you grew up because we had one in Wichita Falls, Texas, and that was the highlight of our of our time, of our childhood, was getting to go to fun land. <laughs> yes, but did, but did you have a wild mouse? That's the oh, real question. Oh, I, the wild mouse. I don't remember the wild mouse, but we definitely had the helicopters <laughs> that went up and down. That's where you faced okay, your fears, yeah. right? According to the book, that's where you really had your come-to-Jesus moment with yourself, right? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, and wild mouse. I mean, it, yeah, it's not not every town, you know, could could afford could a wild it. mouse. Right, <laughs> I understand that. You know, wild pretty, mouse. It was, an, it was a Paducah exclusive kind of thing, probably. <laughs> um, but yes, Funland was uh, a place where some of my earliest memories, uh, good and bad, you know, terrorizing <laughs> moments uh, with my brother, uh, but also moments of great you know, conquering of my fears, facing, uh, you know, mm -hmm. staring down the wild mouse 
which, as I say in the book, you know, it, it never dawned on me as a kid, you know, wild mouse. I mean, how, how ferocious can that really be? It's a mouse, for crying out loud. You know, it's not a wild rat or maybe, or, you know, wild, I don't know, lion, but it's a mouse. But, but still, it was, it was a terrifying thing until I conquered it and, uh, and then, you know, thought, thought I'd really experienced uh, all the ups and downs that life could bring. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, of course, climbed on board the Screaming Eagle uh, at, at a much larger uh, amusement park and much more like the, the roller coasters you might find at uh, Six Flags there in Texas. So, uh, you know, I, it was it was about, all of my life was about to change. But yeah, Funland was a, a pretty special place as a kid. Yeah. And speaking of that, how much fun is it for you that your children are now following suit in the music industry? Oh, it's uh, it is really really cool. It's so fun for us to get to cheer them on and uh, watch what they're doing. You know, they toured with me. My boys were in my band for about five years, uh, playing guitar and, ba- and drums. And uh, I knew, you know, I just there was no question in my mind that these guys were. They just kept getting better and better. Caleb was writing songs that were great and way beyond his years. And I, I knew the day was going to come when they were going to finally realize I wasn't cool enough to be in their band anymore. Oh, that's so not true. Kick me out. And, uh, <laughs> but they are still such great. They came the other night, actually, because they played in Phoenix uh, last night. And I played in Phoenix the night before that. And I actually had to leave. I didn't get to see them. My wife and daughter stayed over to see him in Phoenix, but I, uh, I had to leave, but they came to my concert, and they're still so great. They're like, Dad, you're awesome. You did great. Love this it. was cool, and that was cool, what you did. And, you know, they're still, they're still just some of my biggest fans and best encouragers, And um, but yeah, I'm very, very proud of those guys. Boy, they're so good. They yeah. really are so good. Um, my, we love them. I embarrass my kids because I love, I just love Colony House. It's a great great music so thanks for bringing forth that legacy um yeah really just so good okay in your book um i know it had to have been just uh, it is a labor of love and i'm sure a lot of it was cathartic in many ways i know y'all that y'all had written a book right before this one even about the stuff you lived through with your with your sweet daughter and um what do you think um what do you hope is the takeaway for people well I really, you know, when I started the, the whole process, and I think I even say this at the beginning of the book, of the book, you know, I wrestled a lot with just why would I, you know, expect someone to take the time because this is not going to be a short little couple of hour read. If I'm gonna, I can't even say my name in less than five <laughs> minutes. So you know, if I'm gonna <laughs> tell my story, it's about fifteen or twenty lifetimes crammed into into one life. Yeah. And uh, if I'm going to try to do that, it's, it's, I feel like I'm going to. It's going to take some some pages and some words and some time. And um, you know, my story isn't any more important than anyone else's, just because I've had my face on the cover of an album or won some awards. But I do feel like if I can share it in a way that others would feel a lot less alone, yeah, and be able to say. And with this guy's honesty, I mean, it's, it's what it's what has encouraged me and meant so much to me, even in Scripture, when I can read the story. I mean, I love hearing that David killed Goliath with one stone and that God did that through him, these great victory stories. But what what has kept me breathing some days and, and, and walking forward on my faith journey is hearing David, you know, cry out to God and say, How long, O oh Lord? You know, are you going to forget me forever and be honest about the struggle and the unbelief and the, and the pain? Or yeah. hearing the Apostle Paul say, you know, I'm weak, but yeah. he, his strength is perfect in my weakness. So I'm going to boast in my weakness. What? That's kind of crazy. Right. And, and yet those are the things that have given me so much hope. And so I felt like if I can share my story in that way, in an honest way, that by the end of it, when someone closes a book, they can say, you know what? God has been faithful in this guy's life. That really is his story. He hasn't done it all right. He made mistakes, but God's even taken those missteps or those mistakes and is working in his life all of these things together for something that is for his good and, and for God's glory. And he's been faithful. God's been faithful. So I'm 
I can trust that God will be faithful in my story and my life as well. And that's that really is what it, it comes down to for me. Mm, that's a good word. What caused you to make the decision to write this book? What pushed you to that? Well, a lot of things. I mean, I, I've been asked over the years, you know, to consider it and different times. And I've always said someday. I know someday I'll want to do that. Um, I think it was perspective. I think when I was approached okay. three years ago about it, it was the first time where I felt like I think I'm at the right place in the yeah. journey. I've got the, the perspective on a lot of my journey now that I wouldn't have had 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the real compelling things, honestly, was hearing so many people in the last few years talk about how much my wife, Mary Beth's book, has meant to them yeah. Yeah. and how deeply it encouraged them because of her vulnerability yeah. and her honesty. Yeah. And I think I've just heard so many people say that, and I thought, you know what? I mean, people that would say of more than any book I've ever read, just her willingness yeah. to be honest mm -hmm. really uh, encouraged me so deeply in my faith. And I thought, you know, as I heard those, I thought, well, that that really encourages me to, to, to go ahead and do this now um, and, and begin to try to, you know, share my story with people. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you, I think you did it as bravely as she did. And I think part of why people love it so much is that you, you both, um, don't shy away from suffering, which is, you know, for sure. Well, I would say, I would guess on like the top five list of things that people don't want to do and just the fear, yeah, the absolutely. fear that comes with it. And yeah. I, I just love your song. The spring is coming because I was explaining to my kids the other day, I'm looking at a tree right now that looks like it's dead. But it's not. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you're yeah. in spring right this minute, you know, at the at the cusp of it. And what what is that just, you know, even I'm sure it has such a special meaning to you. And even if you see them, bud, where, where does that put you? Well, I mean, it it continues to be the place that we have to run back to, um, you know, over and over again as a family and, and Mary Beth and me. Um, you know, because we continue, we're, we're on this journey, as all of us are, carrying grief and sadness and longing and ache in our heart uh, for what isn't as it should be, uh, for what yeah, is unfixable, so this side of heaven, which I talk a lot about, yeah. you know, in my book. And yet yeah. the, the hope that keeps us breathing and keeps us taking the next step is that the story's not over yet, yeah. you know, Amen it's just not over. It's like that tree. I mean, you, you look at it and go, well, that the story isn't over. What it looks like, what it appears yes. right now mm -hmm. is not the end of the story. And, um, and that's, that's the gospel. That's the hope that we yeah. have. And it's just, we have to so keep good. singing it and speaking it and reminding our own hearts of it and each other of, of that truth. Okay. So along that line, then, uh, give us a, a Stephen, Oh, do you want to do yeah, this one? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, well, we first of all love that you're singing and writing about it. Keep keep on keeping on. And so here's like our new favorite question. <laughs> if okay. you if you could tell your kids or your grandkids, the Stephen Curtis Chapman, although you can shorten it if you like. I don't know what your grand, how many grandbabies do you have? One, two? We have four. Four? Have four oh, my gosh. Wow. Yes. You cannot be that old. I'm just I kidding. Know. <laughs> I was 12. I'm oh, that's Kentucky, right. So <laughs> That's right. Okay, so yeah. if you could tell them, the Stephen Curtis Chapman, top five tips to live a productive and joy-filled life, what would they be? Is that fair? Wow. <laughs> top five tips. Oh, man. Um, I would, of course, begin with, I think, the, the main one that I know my dad used to tell me and I have passed on and said many times to my kids, um, and that is make it your goal to please and honor God with your life mm -hmm. um, above all else. And then you're not ever going to have to worry about, you know, pleasing or honoring me, uh, your your father or your mother, if that's your goal. Um, do everything that you do uh, with excellence, with all your heart, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, as unto the Lord, you know, an act of worship. I learned that, again, from my dad. If you're going to play music, if you're going to mow the yard, whatever, you know, it's the old, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. right. But, you know, but even more, it's, you're, you're doing it all as an act of worship. Mm -hmm. uh, little song called Do Everything that I once wrote about that sort of thing. Um, I would uh, tell them 
to um, uh, eat healthy, <laughs> even though don't do as I always do. Don't do as <laughs> I do, <laughs> do as I um, say. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, carrot cake, I mean, it has carrots in it, right? So, I, mean, that's healthy. I think healthy. so. Yeah, you know, ice cream is milk based. There we go. But uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's that uh, that's one. That, yeah, they look and go really dead. Okay, yeah, our, kid, no, our kids, are, <laughs> the kids are eating popcorn in the back seat. That's their vegetable. Okay, no, hey, <laughs> they're waving good. at you. Popcorn's good. Popcorn's <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I would, um, uh, you know what? I would just say keep a short, very mm. short record of wrongs. Yeah, that's good. That's um, so good. Because. There are going to be so many, um, and yet, you know, it's it's what I think above everything else. Relationships, especially in marriage, but in all of our relationships, you know, bearing with one another okay. in love, mm-hmm. yeah. I think is so key yeah. um, of all the scriptures that address relationships and all the counseling and hours and hours and mm-hmm. thousands of dollars. And I feel like my wife and I have spent. I'm trying to learn how to love each other well and, and you know, encouraging our kids. The truth is we're going to have to bear with one another because we are going to disappoint and let mm-hmm. each other down and hurt each other and sin against each other. And that's the reason why, you know, we're keeping a short account of each other's wrongs. It's mm-hmm. so important. And, um, yeah, and then I think just be really quick to repent. Um, Ooh, you know, just, just learning that one quicker and quicker mm-hmm. we're not going to get it and my pastor once said so good he's like the older i get i realize i don't i was hoping i would get it right more you know as i get older and and you know mess up less but he said i think if i'm learning anything if i'm if i'm doing anything better it's just that i'm just i'm getting quicker to repent like and, and you know not carry it around long as long so yeah. um so there's there's some tips some of those are pretty heavy but but anyway there's there's some nuggets in there hopefully well, and I'm guessing with you too. There's a lot of laughing. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. For okay. sure. Here's one about the show. What's your favorite song to perform when you're on stage? So we can kind of enjoy that with you on Sunday when you come to Dallas. Yeah. That's a yeah. great question. Well, there's so you know what there's there's different fun there there are different things about different songs that are fun. I love you know the Great Adventure, especially on this tour because I'm. I'm going old school, and I'm actually uh, going back to the day. I haven't done this in years and years, and I just thought it'd be fun because it's 25 years ago that The Great Adventure came out that I first performed that song on stage. So, And I was wearing the wireless headset, you know, the Garth Brooks thing, <laughs> running around on stage. Yeah. So I, I brought it back out for this tour so I can run around on that's stage. That's so funny. And, <laughs> and be crazy. So that's fun. You know, I love Dive. It's always a fun one because I love seeing funny. all the hand motions that yeah. all the people – you know, kids had from their youth group days when they did that song at camp. And yes. You see them doing their diving in dances. Yes. Um, of course, I love Cinderella. Yeah. Uh, that one's always very sweet to just watch the, you know, the dads and, and daughters, you know, uh, snuggling and, and, you know, the tears and the, just uh, that one's always a it's special moment. we got a very special moment planned for that in Dallas as well that I can't tell you. It's just a surprise, but you will, I think, all enjoy that a lot, too, so. Well, I we can't thank you enough for spending time with us this afternoon. You made our you made our carpool run well a lot more fun than it usually is. But I'm not saying anything, guys. Y'all are a lot of fun back there too. So <laughs> anyway, stay safe. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you do. Just thanks for this book. It's wonderful. I've really enjoyed it, and uh, we look forward to sharing it with our listeners and our friends. Thank you, guys. Okay. God bless you. Be safe driving. And, uh, and I will look forward to seeing you guys uh, in Dallas. Okay. okay. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.